Well, the situation in Bangladesh remains concerning. With me is Sajib Wazid. He is the son of Sheikh Hasina, who was the leader of Bangladesh for 15 years and brought stability to Bangladesh. So, welcome to Vion. My first question to you is about the situation in Bangladesh. It's almost a few days now since Sheikh Hasina left the country, and we have seen uh, violence especially targeting the minorities, the Hindu minorities. Thank you for having me. Yes, that is what, uh, for the last uh, few days, especially since uh, my mother left, it has been a state of complete anarchy in Bangladesh. Uh, because the police were initially blamed for uh, violence against protesters, and then the police were attacked, uh, and policemen were being attacked throughout the country, so the, all the police have quit. They, uh, they were afraid to wear the uniform, and they have completely abandoned their posts, so there is no police anywhere in Bangladesh. It is completely lawless. Uh, for the first two days, there were attacks, targeted attacks, mostly on our uh, Awama League supporters and activists, as well as the minorities, who are mostly the Awama League supporters. Uh, we have reorganized the Awama League, reactivated them, so that now they are safeguarding themselves. Uh, situation uh, i you know it's not as bad as it was yesterday but it's still a complete state of anarchy there is looting rioting and looting going on throughout the country in all the cities mm -hmm. um, so talking about your mother she's uh, here in india uh, she reached india on 5th itself 5th of august itself uh, uh, what is the current status uh, and what's the next plan of your mother is she seeking asylum in a third country so no at this point no decision has been made i know there are a lot of rumors going around but my mother has not applied for asylum in any country uh, she has not made any plans she really did not want to leave bangladesh it's her home she loves the country. Even after politics, she wanted to retire and live there. And so she does eventually want to go back to Bangladesh. She does not want to spend her life outside. Uh, so we're waiting to see how the situation plays out. Uh, whether she returns to politics or not, she would like to go back to Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. uh, you said she would like to go back to Bangladesh. Uh, uh, you also said earlier this week that uh, unlikely that you will come back to politics but essentially if you can give us any timeline when is the plan to go back to bangladesh and uh, will be this be seen as a u-turn because you were earlier saying that there is no plan to go to bangladesh now yes you're absolutely right it is a complete u-turn because initially when this happened we as a family decided that no we want to be done with Bangladeshi politics. The rest of our family, we've been settled abroad. I myself have been settled in the U.S. for almost 30 years. Uh, whether I go to Bangladesh or not doesn't make a difference. Uh, my mother is the only one who was living in Bangladesh, and she really does not want to leave the country. But we all thought that she would be safer outside. Unfortunately, what we saw was once our family gave up made that uh, uh, declaration, then the attacks on our party members increased. Because I think then uh, the militants, whoever was attacking, thought, OK, now the Obama League is weak. The Obama League has no chance of coming back without a strong leadership. And that is why we as a family made the decision that we cannot let the Obama League suffer. So the U-turn wasn't because of us, because of what we want, it was for the sake of the Obama League, for the sake of our party. It is still the oldest and largest political party in Bangladesh. We have tens of millions of supporters. We have hundreds of thousands of party members throughout the country. We can't abandon them. Mm -hmm. uh, 5th of August, she came to um, India on a very short notice. Uh, uh, since then, how many times you have spoken? What is her condition? And essentially, if you can perhaps describe uh, uh, the events of 5th of August, how um, disastrous uh, it were, and also in terms of her security and safety as well. Uh, so um, I've been speaking to her every day. Uh, first few days, she was in shock. She was very upset. She was very uh, disappointed with the people of Bangladesh. Uh, but now she's uh, in a better mood. Her spirits are up. She's much more determined to fight for her party. 
she has been uh, uh, in touch with many of our party leaders, so she's now back in, in leadership mode. Um, in terms of what happened that day, my mother had decided to step down because she didn't want any more bloodshed of students because she was already being blamed, but she wanted to do it in an orderly fashion, that she would make a speech, then declare a transition, uh, uh, parliament would then hold new elections, and there would be an orderly transition of power. Uh, instead, before she could do that, the students uh, started to march on the prime minister's residence. Uh, she had ordered the military not to uh, shoot at the students. So when the, uh, when the protesters, well, I don't know if they're students anymore because you see what they're doing. These are not the acts of student protesters. These are mobs and vandals in Bangladesh. Um, so when they approached the army barricade, the, arm, the soldiers fired in the air, but because they were, they did not want to shoot uh, civilians. We did not want them to shoot civilians because it would have been a massacre. And so they passed through the army barricade and started marching towards the prime minister's residence. At that point, her security took her to a secure location and then to the military airbase in Tejgal. Uh, at the military airbase, uh, the helicopter was ready for her. She asked my aunt to get on the helicopter, but that she would stay behind. And um, uh, at that point, my aunt called me, put me on the phone with her, and I convinced her that, no, you have to leave the country. They will kill you. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, she left the country, and now you see the result. Mm -hmm. uh, August uh, hasn't been a, a lucky month for your family. Your grandfather <laughs> was uh, assassinated, and we saw what has happened uh, as well on 5th of August. Uh, you also said that she could have been killed. So were there any, I mean, strong assessments that she could be targeted by uh, the mobs? Yeah, the mob had announced that it would march on the prime minister's residence. That was their goal. That's where they were marching. Now, the prime minister's residence is very heavily defended. You have our SSF, which is our special security force. Uh, you have our PGR, which is the prime minister's guards regiment. They are military, they are heavily armed, and they were fully prepared to defend the prime minister's residence. Unfortunately, if that were to happen, hundreds, perhaps thousands of demonstrators would have died. And my mother did not want that. Mm -hmm. It would have been a bloodbath. Mm -hmm. If we had allowed them to march on the prime minister's residence and the uh, official security had protected the prime minister like it is their mandate to do, hundreds if not thousands of protesters would have been massacred. Mm -hmm. And we did not want that. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw the new government uh, under Professor Yunus taking charge uh, yesterday. What's your reaction uh, to the taking charge, the new interim government uh, under Professor Yunus? Well, I mean, unfortunately, it is an unconstitutional government. I mean, this is a government that's been appointed. Uh, yeah, fine, the demonstrators wanted him. But demonstrators are only a small fraction of the population of Bangladesh. They don't represent the people of Bangladesh. There was no election. He's completely unelected. Still, what has happened has happened. We are in a completely unconstitutional situation. And now uh, we will see how they perform their job, whether they're even able to restore law and order first. That is the first priority. Mm -hmm. And then if they're, you know, then the second priority should be the restoration of constitutional democracy. Let's see what they're able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, I don't think it will take too long to find out. Mm -hmm. uh, so you said uh, uh, the plan is for your mother to go back to Bangladesh. Uh, do you sense that the government will press charges against her uh, when it comes to usage of force uh, when the protesters were protesting, the protests by the students? My mother never ordered the use of force. The violence started and the police some police members used force. Our government had already formed a three-member judicial committee to investigate the killings. They had already suspended the police officers. There was no order. So if you'll remember, when we had the last coup, the military government arrested my mother. They charged her with corruption. It went to trial. And at trial, the case completely fell apart because there was no evidence against my mother. My mother had never been involved in corruption. My family has never been involved in corruption. So, yes, they can try, but if they want to do it democratically, if they want to do it uh, the proper way and they, they take her to trial, 
they will never be able to convict her. She did not order any violence against the protesters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And essentially, uh, have you analyzed why this protest happened in terms of uh, uh, the scale of the protest and uh, the protest leading to toppling of a very stable government? Uh, Prime Minister Hasina, now the former Prime Minister, was there for 15 years and that stability brought growth in Bangladesh. We all know that Bangladesh was seen as an economic uh, tiger in the region as well. So have you analysed and who do you think is responsible for the developments which have shocked the region and the world as well? Well, I strongly believe that there was some foreign intelligence element involved here because the protests really started it didn't start because of something our government did. It was a court ruling. You see, the quotas had already been reduced by our governments uh, four years ago, four or five years ago, when the first quota protests happened. But in response to a lawsuit against it, uh, the quotas were reinstated by the courts, and our government had filed an appeal to the Supreme Court. So our government was fighting that. So our government was fighting with the, in the courts to reduce the quotas. So, there was no need for the protest. There was no need for the protest to continue. We believe that there was outside elements, extremist elements, perhaps a foreign intelligence element. Uh, I strongly suspect ISI that was feeding this. So the reasons I believe that is even after we appealed to the Supreme Court and we assured the protesters that we would reduce the quotas, uh, they took one of the quotes of my mother out of context, which she had said, we don't want Rajakar families getting government jobs. And they turned that into, my government had called the protesters Rajakars. She did not. She never called the protesters Rajakar. But that was spread on social media. And then that night, July 15th, you had some unknown groups marching at Dhaka University in the middle of the night, under cover of darkness, chanting, we are Rajakar, we are Rajakar. Now, that is the equivalent of marching in Jerusalem in the middle of the night, chanting, we are Nazis, we are Nazis. What would be the result? It enraged our student uh, followers. So then Bangladesh Chaturli, our student group, they got angry, they attacked the protesters. That's how the violence started. The police tried to stop the violence, but in trying to stop the violence, some of the police used excessive force. Now, our government reacted to all of this. Our government stopped the violence immediately. Our government suspended all the police officers that used excessive force immediately. And we formed a three-member judicial commission to investigate all the deaths. So we did everything to correct whatever went wrong. It wasn't, these weren't orders from the top. These were individuals at the ground level acting on their own or reacting. And our government stopped it and corrected it. And then we invited, my mother herself invited the protesters for dialogue. Even after, and then the Supreme Court, we actually expedited the Supreme Court hearing and we overturned the quotas and it was all done, finished. Mm -hmm. After that, the protesters started demanding, they decided they had one point, which would be the toppling of the government. And then they started attacking the police with firearms. They weren't unarmed. So where did these protesters, so all this sequence that no matter when, however we resolve the situation, somebody kept inciting the situation further, inflaming it. And then they armed the protesters. The only agency that could arm, provide weapons is our militants or our foreign intelligence service. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, uh, you mentioned about foreign intelligence. Uh, you also mentioned about ISI, which is Pakistan's intelligence arm. If you can elaborate on what you suspect as their role in uh, the protest and the eventual toppling up of uh, a very stable Hasina government? I mean, I believe the role was on social media and online and spending money in the media to inflame the situation and then supplying weapons. That, I believe, is what the actions were. Mm -hmm. And so, whoever okay. behind this. Mm -hmm. And, sir, do you uh, suspect uh, involvement of um, any other country? Uh, Perhaps uh, I mean, China or it US? Possible? No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm positive China is not involved because China has never interfered in our internal affairs. But the US, who knows? It's entirely possible. So do you suspect the American role as well? Uh, in I, I have no evidence. I cannot say definitively, but I wouldn't rule it out. Mm -hmm. uh, 
what next for Bangladesh? What's your assessment? What will happen in Bangladesh? Well, look, we have seen these interim governments in Bangladesh before. These governments picked by a handful of individuals consisting of uh, elite. Uh, the last time we had that was in 2007, 2008. Within that government totally failed to run the country. Uh, the economy completely stalled. Uh, they were, they could not control, it, it became completely corrupt. Uh, we shall see what happens with this government now. That's why I feel that this government's priority should be to hold elections as soon as possible and return democracy because they are an undemocratic government. They are unelected. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't matter if a small group of protesters wants them. And mind you, 20,000 or even 50,000 protesters in Bangladesh is a tiny fraction of the population. We have 170 million people. They do not represent the will of the majority at all. Mm -hmm. So it is a completely unconstitutional situation. It is a completely undemocratic government. But we shall see. If they don't hold elections soon and try to hold on to power, I think Bangladesh is going to end up like Pakistan or Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. uh, you also in the past have mentioned to we on interview that uh, it can end up like Pakistan. Uh, so in terms of what element of Pakistan, do you see continuous instability in Bangladesh now? Without the Obama League, without a strong government, you see, the only strong government Bangladesh has had in its history, and this is a proven track record that has provided stability, and you have said this, no one can deny it, everyone has said this and everyone says this, the only government in the history of Bangladesh that has provided stability, security, and economic growth has been Sheikh Hasina's government. Mm -hmm. No other government has been able to do it. So there is your right answer right there. Without Sheikh Hasina, Bangladesh economy will stagnate. It will never be stable. It will never be secure. Mm -hmm. And, sir, uh, in terms of your involvement in uh, Bangladeshi politics or your sister's involvement in Bangladeshi politics, could we in future, not tomorrow or this year, perhaps in the next five years or ten years, you also coming to Bangladesh, your sister also coming to Bangladesh and playing an important role uh, in the Bangladeshi politics? Can we see that? Uh, I can't really answer that. My family, myself included, we've never been interested in politics. The only reason, uh, and in fact, you heard me on Monday, that my family was done with politics, because that was our intent. Mm -hmm. The only reason I am staying involved, the only reason I uh, changed direction is because our people were being killed, and I have to do whatever it is for them. So the reality is, BNP and Awami League are the two largest political parties in Bangladesh. Whenever there is democracy, whenever you have elections, one of these two parties is going to win. Power is going to switch between these two parties for the foreseeable future. No one can stop it. Both of us, there are 170 million people in Bangladesh. Each of us has tens of millions of followers and voters. Mm -hmm. That's not going to go away anytime soon, no matter what anyone tries to do. So. I don't know about myself personally, but Awami League will be back in power someday, whether it's sooner or later. It is inevitable. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, my last question to you is, uh, when we saw the protests on 5th of August, we saw visuals as well, visuals of your grandfather's statue uh, being vandalized, uh, your mother's pictures being torn. Uh, what do you have to say about that? I am really, really disappointed and, and disgusted with these protesters. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion. Um, this was a conversation uh, about uh, the situation in Bangladesh. Uh, but essentially, this is a situation which is concerning for the countries in the region, including India as well, which, of course, has been trying to get its citizens out of the country who are wanting to come out of Bangladesh. But uh, uh, from India, we can only send uh, a message uh, of hoping that Bangladesh will be back because it's a country with which India shares a long border and stability of Bangladesh is important uh, for the region and of course uh, for the world as well, given that it was seen as a crucial growth story.